GTA 6 is going to flop. And basically, I've been thinking about this for a long while. I uh, saw it yesterday, the uh, trailer. It released abruptly. Uh, it was supposed to be this morning, but due to reasons, uh, things changed. Talked about the gaming industry as a whole and why I think Rockstar isn't immune. I thought about doing a video on... Uh, I was going to break it up into three parts. There was going to be one about the gaming industry as a whole. Another one about the story and characters. And then I was going to do a third one about the online. It's what I originally planned, but due to reasons, that all changed. Um, by the time I thought of everything to say for the video, I basically found myself in a situation to where we're already at the tail end of everything and the trailer's gonna about to be released and i even remember thinking of a joke that oh this video is gonna age like fine milk and we can make cheese out of it and then the trailer just kind of took everything that i originally thought of and just tossed it right out the window and said it's you don't need to do this deep dive because we could see how bad it is through the trailer and because i was thinking maybe there would be some nuances of something like that of saints row the reboot and though some of my stuff kind of maintained itself of being something like that of the Saints Row reboot, but there is a chance, there is a genuine chance that I think GTA 6, even though it's probably going to be my least favorite of the entire series, I I could still see it having some quality to it. I, I can see that. I'm just, seeing the trailer did not give me any verification that it was going to be better than what I thought. I I think I think in the end it's still going to be like what I think like how I think it's going to be. I'll give you a small summary of what I thought before the trailer. I was going to talk about the gaming industry about how you have games like Redfall, games like Golem, uh Lord of the Rings Golem. Uh there was a video game called Hyenas. It was pulled from beta. Sega, I think, even recently uh, released a statement saying that they got rid of the game just simply because they ran out of funding. The, I was also going to go into detail about the revolving door of leadership. Because I could name three particular employees that used to work at Rockstar that are no longer there. There's probably not a revolving door of leadership, but there are probably going to be some growing pains with trying to replace those that left. Hyenas, going back to that, a lot of developers that worked on the project said there was a revolving door of leadership. Whenever one person came in to try to take over the project, within creative assembly it just went it just went south the lack of games and basically with gta 3 it doesn't matter if you play the story or just run around throughout the city you see gangs everywhere there is a south side gang that is basically like bloods and crypts and the south side gang if you want to count that as just a single gang that is a grand total of seven. If you want to say that's two separate, then that's a grand total of eight. Old retro top-down games, those would have nine different games. And then I look at GTA V, and if you just play the main story, just the single-player campaign, 
And even worse, if you don't even play the main story and you just run around Los Santos throughout, you know, Blaine County, GTA 5, the only gang that's really represented is The Lost. To what the, from what I could think of. Because... We could argue that, yeah, there's probably Vagos, there's probably Ballers, there's... If it's not Grove Street, there's like a gang similar to Grove Street to some regard, but you are probably are not going to find them uh, a very robust uh, whole group of them just within the city. We are aware that Martin Mendrazo has a gang... But, again, there's just not a whole lot to it than just that. So there's going to be a lack of gangs, and that ties into Saints Row, the reboot. Because, basically, to my understanding, the early, early development of the Saints Row is... They were going to go with a Saints Row 2.5. But what ended up happening is Saints Row 2.5 just kind of turned into whatever the hell this is. And basically, it's just a case of it, it, it felt like a completely missed opportunity. They were planning to go back to basics, and then that's not the Saints Row that we ended up getting and so then that has to come into question well what happened with that how how did we go to saints row 2 to the reboot we ended up getting so what happened there and basically to my understanding it was a publisher idea and they wanted we can't do games no games don't do anything about games. We want friendship. And I look at Lucia and Jason, and my mind goes to, Dear God, that's exactly what they're doing. They're trying to do a story of potentially love, potentially friendship. No games. Let's just do a bunch of robberies. And it's just... Now the wheels are kind of turning, and it's a case of something. something's in the water, something's changing, and I, I see the writing on the wall. There's a potential possibility. I'm probably not going to like the characters, but I'm only basing that on the fact that I can't really think of any real characters in the GTA series to where it's like, definitively, that character's good, I want that one. Because I look at Nico Bellic, I think he had a decent story compared to the rest of all of the characters in GTA so far. So, w when it comes to story and character, he's probably at the top. You look at... Tommy Versetti, at least in my opinion, he's probably one of my favorite characters other than Johnny K. But if we're just going with mainline entries only, no DLC, no online stuff, then we're, we're looking at Tommy Versetti as possibly my favorite of, in terms of, in terms of a character to go with. And then the last fun game to have is San Andreas. At least in my opinion, because there was a lot of customization. Um, the whole idea of having San Fierro, Las Venturas, I loved that map so much. I spent so much time in the casino and just playing the story missions. I 
I like San Andreas. It was the blueprint of what every GTA game needs to be after this. And the one thing that I know is going to happen with GTA 6 is the radio is going to be absolutely terrible. The Because the thing with GTA 5, my understanding, Rockstar decided to go with a bunch of music that wasn't going to cost them anything, essentially. Which would explain why a lot of radio stations in the modern day would kind of go with music that they have for GTA 5. But it's GTA 4 that I have commercials of that game within the game that are just burnt into my memory, and I just think it's just so hilarious. The quality of the talk radio, the parody, just everything about the radio when it came to talk radio, it's just the best. And even the political ads that normally I try in my best to steer away from politics, when it comes to GTA 4, to this day, me and my friends, we still talk about... Uh-oh, here comes Michael Graves with more of his negative attack ad. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, the Michael Graves ad. And, and then the line... Graves for governor, then call him a fat, bald prick and hang up the phone. These commercials these ads are so hilarious the parody the satire it's so good you can trick people that this is not parody that that this is just some small town usa and 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 this and this bs is all happening and i i, I can see that being a thing to where you can actually trick people that no this is this is it but, oh yeah, and then there's even the online stuff. The online. Basically, the blueprint of the online is actually looked at Payday. Payday 2 and GTA 5 both released in the same year. They have 10 years of support. And because of this game, well, if you look at Payday 3, which launched in 2023... You can actually see how many guns that are available in this game. I'm going to show you a screenshot of all the guns in GTA, or excuse me, not GTA 3, but Payday 3. In Payday 3, this is all the weapons. Sidearm and primary weapons. This is it. And then, if you look at Payday 2, that has 10 years of support, this is all the weapons for just the pistols. How about SMGs? Even a fucking grenade launcher and rocket launcher for a sidearm. That is what you can do in Payday 2. So when people went to Payday 3, it promoted how good Payday 2 is. And then now you have a bunch of people that want to play Payday, but they don't want to get the new one. They're going to go back and they're going to play the old one. And everyone's going to focus on the older game. And the older game overall can hold up. I think that GTA, when the online launches, it is going to be very much the same. To where, here's GTA 6, here's the online. Well, you know what? There's not a whole lot of weapons, there's not a whole lot of activities to do. You probably can't have community creations come up with various different stuff, so, hey... You know what does have all those things? GTA 5. And then I can see it to where maybe Rockstar is going to get mad that people are playing this older game. You need to be playing the new one out of spite 
I could see it to where they could cut the servers off of GTA 5 to purposely force everybody to play GTA 6. And I wouldn't be surprised if the GTA 5 growing pains are going to make a comeback to where you're going to have character loss, to where you're going to have a lack of various different things that happened at launch the gta 6 online when you have character loss people can't get in long wait times long load screens this and that people are just gonna find something else to do that does work properly and when that happens you're going to ruin an entire audience that's exactly what happened with payday 3 i think i'm pronouncing this right the ko uh perico heist the ko perico heist i think i'm pronouncing that right that particular heist a lot of people probably pointed out that oh this is a reference that gta 6 is going to take place in miami this and that i actually think there was a rewrite of gta six to the point to where they made so many assets for a particular writing of the game and then it got rewritten but you made all these assets and it's like well what do we do do we just put it into an another portion of the rewrite but we just keep we, we don't have a reason to go there. We don't do anything about this other other islands and assets. And basically, they just, well, we'll put it in GTA 5, make a heist out of it. But apparently, it's supposed to be a Pablo Escobar reference or another. It's supposed to be like his island that he actually owns. It's a real place. And... It just, things got repurposed. By the end of the day, I saw something else. You're seeing a bunch of what looks like Twitter, Instagram, YouTube stuff. And if you have a full thing about influencers, it's going to fall on deaf ears. Because... I don't want that in a GTA game. Maybe I'm old fashioned. Maybe it's, maybe I'm a bit of a boomer in that regard. And some people are probably gonna like it. Some people are gonna be all for it, but I'm just gonna play for you the scene from Saints Row, the reboot, and in this very scene, this is the scene that, well, it speaks for itself. We should do something irresponsible to celebrate. What do you have in mind? Oh, I don't know. The money fight! This. This is the scene. To where I saw it and I said, I'm not going to give this game a chance because this scene is just so bad but i never played the saints row reboot but there is one game i did play and i'm gonna play for you a scene from that game that came from my own stream take a look Pathetic attention. That sect, that sect <laughs> is a bunch of losers spamming your newsfeed. That they pretend to be the saviors of your free will. When this, this scene, this one right here, that is exactly my money fight scene. <laughs> From Saints Row. 
I saw this and I was thinking, no, this is not for me. I'm not the target audience. I'm, no, get this off my screen. And yet, when it comes to the GTA 6 trailer, I had my money fight scene already. And it was this. I saw this, and my first thought is just, who is this for? You got someone twerking on a car, and that's one thing. And maybe if this was done at like a strip club or something, would have been fine with it. But then something else happens. You see a follow button down below. I'm just thinking, please tell me there's not like influencers related to the game. Maybe, maybe there's a chance that there's just an online thing or another within the game you could go on your phone and you could see these different videos and stuff and maybe that's all that is but if they actually go deep with this the question then remains are we robbing banks for clicks That's not why I play a GTA game. I, I, I mean, I know I got the lights going. I'm, I'm an influencer myself, but I don't want this done in GTA. That's not what I find entertaining. I started thinking about what other game happened that took place that was so bad, I played the game beginning to end. But in the first 15 hours, I wanted to stop and end. But I still gave it the college try. And turns out I gave it 40 hours or so. And I actually ended up beating the game. It's Watch Dogs 2. This is the game that tried to play to the crowd of the internet. And it fell, it felt so tone deaf that you are trying to do something with the internet and it just, it doesn't work out. I'm, I'm looking at Rockstar and I'm like, please give me something else that gives me a sign of hope because if influencers is going to be one of the main focuses of the game i i thought we were going to get saints row reboot stuff nuances this and that and then it turns around no it's watchdogs 2 and you're going to try and play to the internet crowd? That game is not going to be for me. And I have been thinking about it ever since. And I also know that maybe there's a possibility I'm alone on this. And I will admit, I'm probably alone on this. But I... There is a chance I am going to love the landscape of GTA 6. There still is a mild glimmer of hope that GTA 6 is going to be good. But the trailer did not inspire confidence that it's going to be competent. And I've been thinking about it ever since. I don't know how much of this video that I'm going to be playing for you right now is going to make it in the final cut. But all I do know is GTA 6, I'm not a fan. Maybe it could be good. I still want to be wrong that this game has a chance. But right now, at the time of the trailer, 
the very first released trailer. That was supposed to re release in December 5th, but actually was released early, early because of a leak. Not sure how that happens. But on December 4, I saw it. And the very next morning, I did this video. At the moment, until I see otherwise, I already thought it was going to be bad. With this trailer, it just got worse. And I'm saddened as a fan. And there still is a chance that all of this is redeemed. Ten years, this game could have had concept art. For ten years, this game could have been developed in big and small ways. When this game fully releases, and the online fully releases, because I think the online is going to be pretty much the main focus, which is another reason why I'm just not a fan of the game anymore, because GTA Plus kind of ruined it. And also suing a bunch of modders, creating a bunch of stuff to try and make the older games relevant. That kind of rubbed me the wrong way a lot. And by the end of the day, I'm just not a fan. Yet.